Welcome back to The Joy of Vinyl. I'm Rick Coast. Now I browse through a lot of record stores and it's, I would say it's usually one of the first things I do when I'm in a new town. I look to see what's around. I should probably do a video about what to look for when buying used records, but this one is about after you've bought the record. How do you identify it? Is it a reissue? Is it a first pressing? How do you tell? It would be nice if you know every record came with information about where and even when it was pressed, but that's not the case. It takes a little bit of detective work. And even then, after you've done all this detective work, you may not be 100% sure that you've identified the record correctly or accurately. But there are clues of its origin hidden on the record itself. For example, this record right here, ACDC's High Voltage. I bought this back in the early 1980s. It was originally released in 1976. But what about this exact record? When was it pressed? Well, let's try and find out. Now before I get started, I've always enjoyed this album, but not everyone did. Most famously was the review in Rolling Stone written by music journalist Billy Altman. There he said this. Now he couldn't have predicted, nobody could, that this band would continue to rock stadiums going on what, five decades now? That's crazy. And it all started with this record. So how do I identify when and where this particular ACDC album High Voltage was pressed? Like I said, it's, it's not easy. It's even a pain in the ass most of the time. Many of today's records that you'll find in any store have barcodes that help immensely. But that wasn't the case back when this was released. A barcode was basically how the band conducted themselves when they went to the pub. Yeah, I know, that was a very bad joke. I couldn't help it. But for me, an invaluable tool to help identify it is Discogs. I did an entire video a while back on how I shop using Discogs. My method really hasn't changed much. Neither has how I use Discogs to tell when a record was pressed. I could start with the catalog number. You can sometimes find it on the cover or on the spine of the record itself. Or you can even grab it off the label, which you'll see right here. Today I'll go with the title and I'll narrow it down from there. So let's get going. I'll start with high voltage. This gives me a list of pressings and I'll select all versions. Again, it gives me more to choose from and I'll have every pretty much identified pressing at my fingertips. Once on the master release page, I scroll down to the version selection box near the bottom of the page. You see here there are a lot of choices. In this case, there's 299 to choose from. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm not going through 299 possible matches, so it's time to narrow it down. I'll start with format, which of course is vinyl. Next is label. In some cases, I leave this alone, but here I'm, I'm just going to select ATCO. Last is country. If I had no idea, I'd leave it blank, but since I bought this brand new in a record store in the early 80s in New Hampshire, it's safe to say that it was pressed in the US. So this leaves us with 14 of the 299 to review for a match, and this is where it gets fun. So there's also a spot here where you can enter extra info, but for each pressing, I open a new tab. Then I focus on the images. 99% of the time, these images will include the label. Now what I'm looking for are possible matches to my label. So not this one, and not this one either. If it's not a match, I close the tab. For those that are close or possible matches, I leave the tab open. In this case, I have a very good possible match. As you can see, things look to be in the right place. I can be pretty sure I have the right pressing if I go by label alone. Even the text at the, the bottom is scrunched together with little space or room left. 
side two appears to be the same. Things look good here as well. Now I could stop now if it was the only label that matched my record, but when it comes to identifying a pressing, I like to take it a step further. Now it's going to be really hard to see this, but in the dead wax, which is the space between where the groove ends and the label is, you can see, or in this case, barely see letters and numbers. These letters or numbers will either be etched or stamped into the vinyl direct from the original master disc. You'll find all sorts of hidden things here under the right lighting conditions. You might need a good magnifying glass or a jeweler's loop to see what's there. And taking a picture of it can be frustrating. Now, if I can't read it with my eyes, I'll typically get out my phone and try to get as good an image as I can so that I can you know, make the picture a bit larger. You know, some artists and engineers have a lot of fun with what they put in the dead wax. When Led Zeppelin III was being mastered, Jimmy Page had recently bought Alistair Crowley's former house near Loch Ness. Now, if, I don't know if you remember this, but Crowley was a, a famous occultist in the first half of the 20th century, and he's the one who said, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Ozzy's song, Mr. Crowley, from the Blizzard of Oz album is about Alistair Crowley. In homage to Crowley, Jimmy Page has Do What Thou Wilt etched into the dead wax on side A and So Mote It Be etched into side B. In the case of High Voltage, I have on side A the text STC 763667-B. It also has the cryptic words a porky prime cut. Porky refers to George Peckham. George Peckham was a famous recording engineer who produced master discs for over 40 years. His signature motto, a porky prime cut, can often be seen etched into the dead wax. Pretty cool, right? What I see here on side B also matches what Discogs indicates for the runout. So I have a matching label and dead wax text. I can be confident that I've identified this record as a late 70s specialty records pressing. This one's actually a repress using the original master disc to create the stamper. After I've identified it, I'll add it to my collection. I track pretty much everything I own in Discogs, but you might prefer a different way. In the past, I've used spreadsheets, and that was before I discovered Discogs a few years ago. Discogs is crowdsourced, and its database has made identifying when and where a record was pressed a godsend. Sometimes identifying a record is somewhat quick and easy, sometimes not so much. It all depends on how popular the record was and how many times it was reissued. In some of those cases, you might not know the country of origin and find yourself having to wade through a hundred or so versions of a particular album. Other times, you may only be presented with a, a handful to sort through. I love it when that happens. But if it doesn't happen, it can be both frustrating and well, sometimes rewarding, depending on how much time you want to put into it. So what about you? Now, if you've done or dove into you know, IDing pressings, what tips do you have? What methods do you use? I'd love to hear from you, and your knowledge might help others, and it could certainly help me. If you have shortcuts to make it easier, I'd especially love to hear those as well. Now just comment below. And also, if you enjoy you know, this episode and, and this channel, you, know, you can subscribe to it and to know when new and future episodes are released. So, as always, thank you for watching. And until next time, please take care of yourself and enjoy your records.